Cheers! Welcome to Movie Bitches, episode 48. Yeah! Um, so tonight, oh god, April's gone. Like, we lost her. Three movies in one day is too many. It's a lot. It's a lot. It was a lot. But it was fun. Three darts is too much. You don't know what I'm talking about. Cool, it's fine. <laughs> Three darts is too much. Anyway, um, episode So one. tonight, uh, we're reviewing Tomorrowland. I was actually really frustrated with this movie <laughs> yeah. because... I felt like it was a really great idea. Yeah. I was the like, premise. I like the premise. I like the idea of, you know, like Tomorrowland, the idea of the future and how it's changed and whatever. Mm -hmm. And, and I like the idea of trying to like going to visit it and whatever. What I didn't like was fucking what's his face. Fuck tard who can't you'll have to, write you'll have to be a specific. fucking script. <sighs> Damon Lindelof, you've done it again. Maddening! Just it, it's infuriating. Infuriating. How that he starts, he starts incompetent with a and I a solid, interesting idea, yep. and then just does it, runs it into the ground and doesn't know where to go with no. it. No, that's why. What I mean by the end, I was like, huh? Okay. Yeah. Like, what was that about? Because it goes like over here, and then down there, and then this way, and then over that way, and then through a different dimension, and then back. And then it becomes Wally -E and turns yeah. into an agenda movie. Oh my god. Like hard. It, it takes was, a hard left turn. I think this might be more preachy than Wally. -E. Wow. Wow. It was <laughs> so preachy. It was preachy. more compact. Wally -E was like. Preachy over the That's whole true. movie. This movie was like, and now Hugh Laurie will recite a monologue about how we're destroying the planet. And oh my how god! We be how awkward was that? Well, well, it was only outdone awkwardness-wise by his really awful, like loose fit jaw purse. <laughs> so he was wearing these like it was like a shiny, shiny satin. Yep. With with jaw purse sides, but then instead of being tapered, it was just like regular pants. And I had a lot of questions about it. The, <laughs> the entire, like, the costume costuming. design. I mean, the people in Tomorrowland all look like they're from Armani Exchange. Yep. The main girl looks like she's dressed as Sal Minio from Rebel Without a Cause. Like, I was like, what's going on here? Now, do you think they're going to make a sequel called Frontierland? <laughs> <laughs> no. Because I'd like to see that. But I was Just thinking like George that I would... George with like a Daniel Boone hat. Oh my god. I wouldn't mind that. And then they travel back in time. It's like Back to the Future No, three. not George Clooney. Michael Fassbender. Well, of course. Obviously. I mean, we saw him in Slow West. Always. I'm, yeah. Well, uh, I'm, I'm down for Michael Fassbender to be I mean, anything. But, oh, but it would be... He couldn't be nude if it's a Disney movie. Right. So that's a problem. Hmm. <laughs> um, we'll figure it out. I also would be down for a Space Mountain movie. Just like Space Mountain? I don't know. Figure it. You, you could figure out a plot line around it. There's going to be like Tom Sawyer Island movie. Oh, God. It's real just boring. Every, you every just, ride. You just kind of walk around and then you get bored and then you take the raft <laughs> you back. Take the raft back. It's really the low point of the day. <laughs> it's not good. <laughs> Creepy, robot, Creepy robot girl. Creepy robot baby girl. Yeah. Who was like small wonder. Need input. <laughs> Johnny Five is alive. <laughs> The whole time, this is little girl. Athena is alive. <laughs> this is little girl, 10, 11, who is real weird. Yep. And we were like, what's her jam? Is she like 45? <laughs> oh, she's, she's a, a robot. robot. And then she turns into like Robert Patrick in T2. <laughs> and she's like, <laughs> like, imagine just like, imagine Robert Patrick running after the car, but it's like an 11 year old girl. It happened. In a jean jacket. So, like, George Clooney falls in love with this girl robot when he's eight. He's her age at the or time. Or 11 or falls whatever. Falls in love with her. Is mad that she's a robot. Then, presumably, grows up 40 years later still in love with the girl, the 11-year-old girl robot? And they have, like, tender... Like, it was like Winter's Tale. He was like, no, I'll hold you in my arms till you die. And I was like, what's going on here? At least he didn't sex her to death. He did not sex her to death, thank <laughs> God. Although that would have made this movie maybe, like, slightly more interesting. <laughs> I feel like the robot should have been aged up. And, yep. and the guy should have been aged down. Yeah. And they didn't have to be the same age, but just closer. 
Because, you know, like 50 and 11 is a big gap. I know she's a robot, but it's a big gap. Yeah, basically the premise is just that there's like bad juju from Tomorrowland that yeah. is spiraling the earth into like a self-fulfilling prophecy yeah. of self-destruction. Basically, bad vibes are causing global warming. <laughs> and nuclear war. And everything. Because of the future predicting like, machine. It was like Ghostbusters 2 where the goo is putting everyone in a bad mood and you're like, this is dumb. Yeah. But again, why why do we need a plot where the world's gonna end again? That's just, true. Too. Just like make it a simple little thing about how Tomorrowland's having some problems and she's gonna help them out. Yeah. The whole movie's meant to inspire you to think pot. Like by the end of the movie, yeah. you're like, all you need to do is like have some good thoughts and you know if you believe in Tinkerbell clap your hands and she'll be alive it'll be great guys it'll be great kids I mean it basically that was like it was the a thing PSA it to was. get kids to like be into science oh George Clooney you're gonna teach us how to do science in the middle of the movie I went oh is this supposed to be like a tribute to space just go watch Interstellar. A little bit. Like it was, he was well, like trying to be. It was a little bit of Interstellar where it's like, oh, where is that like exploratory like? Yeah, and like we oh, should be NASA like dreaming and yeah, Oof. reaching for the stars. Man, NASA lost its budget, but it's certainly paying movies to like lift the flag and be like, hey, build us up again. But like NASA's been doing shit. That's true. So it's I mean I don't know whatever. I mean, I feel like NASA's kind of in a heyday right now. Like, it's not like people are like, oh, NASA, what are they doing? It's like, right. NASA's on Twitter, like, owning Twitter. <laughs> like, NASA is owning Twitter. But you know what I mean? I feel like Damon Lindelof should just, just be, like, a focus group member. You know, he should just have ideas. And then someone else who, like, can follow through should write yeah. them. So can he just be, like, an intern at a development company? Like, <laughs> at a Fine production thing. company? Fine just, like... I just, yeah, it was just okay. He I, just needs to not write scripts. Yeah. Yeah. Basically. I wouldn't recommend it. I honestly, I just, I like forgot about it. If you're really bored. No. If you're really bored, you if can watch it on Netflix. No. But like, no. there's so many other better things to watch. Don't watch it. If you're, if your kids want to watch it, fine. But you don't have to watch it with them.